Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. This is the second video on sharpening, the honing section of it. Before we were talking about sharpening, and I, I would encourage you to take a look at that video, sharpening part one, where we talk about all the things that you may need to do to get uh, a, a plain iron ready to get honed. Now, this is another aspect about sharpening that uh, I'm gonna take a no-nonsense approach to it. A lot of the ways that you learn, a lot of the material that's out there uh, in terms of seeing people sharpen, what you're doing uh, to, to copy them, to learn how they're doing it, you'll see them lay the iron on the stone, raise it to the degree, pull it back by hand. Yes, you can do it. Yes, you can build up that muscle memory. Here's the thing, like I said earlier, sharpening is not a meditative process after a while. In the beginning, you're gonna be trying to get those thin shavings that float on air and all that kind of stuff. But after a while, you're gonna start building furniture, which is what we're gonna be doing on this channel. And when you have to stop to go and sharpen, you want that done as quick as possible. This is the method that works the best for me. Here are the things that are important to me. I wanna get a consistent, repeatable angle. This is a Veritas honing guide. Comes with this jig that helps you set the distance that the iron protrudes from the jig consistently every single time so that you can get this thing in the jig, on the stones, out of the stones, onto the strop, back in the wood. So let's jump right in. Sorry for the preaching, but I've done the time, guys and girls. Yes, I can do this by hand. I absolutely can. Here's what I've learned about that. After a while, when I'm doing this by hand, I will inevitably creep this edge up a little bit and I end up rolling this edge over and I have to go back to the sharpening stuff. I don't wanna do the sharpening stuff. I wanna do the honing stuff. This happens really quick. So let's jump in, let's get started with this. This is how the honing guide works. Aligning this mark with the width of your blade. In this case, this is a big two and a half inch iron. Now. Here we have a dial that we set to the intended bevel angle. Here I'm using a 25 degree, so I have this dial set. This is locked on. I'll now put the iron into the jig, slide it up against the stop, making sure that I'm flush against this uh, rail and flush against the stop, making sure that's square. We've done all that work to keep a square edge. We wanna make sure we maintain it. Once that's set, take that off. Tighten her down. There's a dial over here that allows you to do primary and secondary bevels. So we'll set it to the 12 o'clock position. And I'm going to begin on the extra course stone just to see where we are because my uh, grinding is probably not exactly 25 degrees. So we're gonna see where we are. And we are hitting right at the heel of the bevel, which is what we want. And I want to raise this scratch pattern uh, almost to the edge. I don't have to go all the way to the edge. So we're going to go ahead and do that. You want to keep even pressure uh, down on this. You don't want to be pressing too hard to one corner or the other. So you can see I'm establishing scratches. It's again coming up high on this side and lower on this side. That's fine. What we want to do is bring the scratch pattern up on the low side, uh, pretty close to this edge. Uh, halfway. It's probably close enough to go ahead and see what we get with the secondary bevel. So I'm going to turn this now to the six o'clock position, which raises this up a little bit higher to add a secondary bevel. Okay, I've now established the primary or the secondary bevel all the way across the edge there. You can probably see the different uh, scratch patterns, hopefully, maybe not. All right, I'm gonna move up through the grits now. Moving on to my next least abrasive. This is the fine diamond stone on the secondary bevel. I'm just removing the scratch patterns now from the uh, coarse diamond stone 
And I'd like to mention that at this point that this is everything that I'll have to do from now on to sharpen this iron for quite some time. So I'll spend a little while on the fine stone on the secondary bevel setting. Check that we've removed the scratches. We're looking pretty good. Move over. Move over toward the extra fine. All right, if this was a smoother plane, at this point, one thing that you might have noticed in your planing is you get plane tracks, which are little ridges that are left from the corners of the irons digging in. This is a jointer, so it's not that big of a deal. And honestly, I use this on the edges of boards more than anything. So we'll go ahead and just camber this a tiny bit. What you do, you just add a little extra pressure to the corner. I use two fingers, and I'm going to do this the same amount of times on both sides. So we'll press down a little harder on this side. One, two, three, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Over on this side, pressure on the corner. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, 15. Now, don't lift this thing up off the stone like this. You're just adding extra pressure to the corners. Over here, I'll work the entire bevel. Even pressure. This is the extra, extra fine. I'll add pressure on the corner. Pressure on the opposite corner. We've got a, definitely got a burr all the way across. We've got a secondary bevel. When you take this out of the jig, go ahead and pull it out that way so when you, you don't bang it into the uh, metal on the way out. It's an awful lot of work to ruin at the very end like that. Next, we have a strop. Strop is a piece of leather suede side up, impregnated with honing compound attached to something flat, a piece of wood. Throw this in the vise, and I'm gonna wipe the back edge here. Just wipe it a couple times, get that burr pointed back towards the uh, bevel. And we'll strop this edge. I want to check to see that the, the whole point of this is to remove that burr. I can still see some of it over here, and it's just flaking off at this point. That's the wire edge. That's what lets you know that you have indeed reached a zero degree radius, is that you've turned the edge of that over. It's curled over the edge of the iron, and now I'm just bending that, that wire edge back and forth until it snaps off. So what we have at this point is a truly sharp plane iron. And oh, what would a sharpening video be without the obligatory shaving of the arm? So there you go. Nice and smooth. So hopefully you understand that that last maybe two, three minutes of the video is all it's gonna take me to get sharp with this plain iron from now on. And it's gonna stay at this level of sharp. There's a difference between sharpening and honing. So what we've done here in the last two or three minutes is honing. Now when I wanna hone this blade, I put it in the jig, run it on, I don't even go to the core stone, fine, extra fine, extra, extra fine, then the strop, I'm ready to go. I'm back to sharpen three minutes. But the whole point of this series of sharpening videos 
was to take you from beginning to end, uh, give you a concept of the entire process of sharpening and honing. Here she is back in the old Stanley Bedrock uh, Type 1, number 8 joiner. And this is actually a piece of uh, Lowe's, <laughs> two by six, that was ripped off to make a shop table a while back. Jointed, full width shaving, full length shaving. Uh, if that matters to you, there you go. I don't measure those, but this performs at the level that I expect Hope you enjoyed the video. Hit that like button. I hope that's helpful. I hope it shows you a little more about sharpening than, than maybe what's uh, mostly available. I know there's some great, great sharpeners out there. Please let me know what you think in the comments. Hit that subscribe button. Come back. We're going to be doing a lot more projects, a lot more technical videos. Thanks for hanging out.